Hey guys, Jessica here. In today's video, I have a super special guest. Today, I'm joined by Kenya Hill. She is a professional model and actress, best mm -hmm. known for being on Cycle 4 of America's Next Top Model. She has also been features, featured in publications such as Rolling Stone, Cosmopolitan, Complex, Vibe, and Seventeen. And she's also acted in New Girl, Half and Half, The Bold and the Beautiful, and The Truth Unspoken. She is signed with Click Models and has her own interactive modeling workshop called Find Your Light. I'm going to be asking you all about that because I love workshops. I've taught my Yay. own so a model workshop. It sounds amazing. So we're going to get all of that, all of that information towards the end. So welcome, Kenya. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me, darling. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to answer some questions and clear things up because it's been a lot of drama on the show. It's been a lot of things happening. So I love to just be able to step in and let people know what the real tea is, what really happened, how I really felt and give my little two cents. We got to hear it from the source. It's only right. Yeah. yeah, it's only fair. We were talking a little bit earlier before we started recording and you brought up such a good point that Everyone in 2020 and 2021 is now suddenly watching the show for the first time and talking about it more than ever. <laughs> Do you, isn't that crazy to have people like after so many years, the show is, is still very much relevant? It's really crazy. Um, I mean, I'm really grateful for it. Like people still recognize me every day and it's crazy. Um, some people are like, I watched you when I was a little girl. And so like, that's when like things get like, you know, it's, it gets weird. Um, just in the sense, just to understand that people know me, like they watched me when they were kids. Um, but just to see people rewatch it and stuff, I think it's amazing. I mean, it was one of the first reality shows that's like not scripted and really gave you an inside line, um, line to the modeling world, which was kind of just this big kind of fabulous mystery. Um, so I think, I mean, I love the show. I watched it myself before um even auditioning so is that what it's made you want to kind of start modeling is that what kind of got you inspired to begin well I always was I kind of I, I was bullied pretty badly when I was in um middle school and high school and I decided I, I kind of really like just adored really confident women and so look, the most confident women of course are supermodels so I really started getting into and memorizing the names of all the supermodels, all the runway girls. And I just wish I had that kind of confidence. And then when I watched the show, I kind of like was doing local modeling. I'm from LA originally. So I was doing local things. Um, and then when the show came out, I was just, I'm so competitive. I just, I didn't do it for fame at all. I just thought, okay, I can do this show. I can do this. I can do this. Um, and I actually auditioned twice for it. Um, the first time I just wow. sent in a video, uh, I was in my freshman year of college and I just, I, I mean, I used to get chills when the show came on. I used to just like, I can do this. Like I, I want to do it so bad. And, um, and so I sent in a video and didn't hear anything. And then that summer went into a live audition in LA, tens and thousands of girls, um, and, and I just was like, okay, they have to see me in person. Maybe if they see me in person, they'll see that I have what it takes. And it was like the best decision ever. So when you went to like go to the audition, well, how was that process like? Because we see edited parts of the show. And one other thing I want to ask you about too, maybe you can incorporate this into your question is the editing of the show. Do you feel like you were portrayed like correctly on the show? Or do you think like editing was a little sus at times? That's a fantastic question. Um, so firstly, when we auditioned, I mean, there were so many girls. We had to be there super early in the morning. And most of the auditioning process is like, it was just like in this really huge room where we all had to pretty much audition in front of everyone else. Like, so everyone else can hear your answers. It's not like you have some private room to go to. And, you know, like you have the pressure of not only the casting directors, but like every other girl who's like sizing you up and like doing all kinds of stuff. Um, and so that was crazy. But I do remember when I was walking out, Michelle, she, she's one of the like main casting directors or used to be. Um, she just gave me this look like, and it kind like of like, solidified in. it for me in my head. I'm like, what was that look? I think, 
maybe. Um, and so that was amazing. But to answer your other question about editing, absolutely. So this show was un was was not scripted. It was an unscripted show. So 100%. Um, I heard that they pretty much cast our girls to be like, they wanted every girl to be sweet, more on the sweeter side. And uh, they just wanted to like not have as much drama in the house, which I kind of agree with because I didn't think that there was much drama in our house. I, the, most, uh, I, the most drama that I remember was really just going to panel and trying to make it through, not wanting to be kicked off. That was like the only thing. Um, a couple of other girls bumped heads, but it wasn't too much. But then watching the show in post afterwards with the rest of the world, I'm like, wow, they really th blow things up out of proportion. So like when you're doing your one-on-one -on -one interviews, if you are, if they're asking you a question, for example, who do you think is going home? Which I think they ask every single time. Who do you think is going home? If you're, I mean, I was 19 and like incredibly opinionated and I just wanted to answer honestly. So if I answer the question and I say, I think Brittany's going home because she did X, Y, Z. And then when they play that back, if they only play back me saying that without people knowing that I was just asked a question and I'm simply answering it, it can make me look a little, little bit like a bitch. So it kind of all comes down to just how they edited it. I don't think they edited. The one thing that they really did not portray properly for me, I think was um, definitely my food intake and all of that stuff towards the end. Um, I didn't realize that I was a stress eater at the time. Um, and so I was a little bit stressed because, you know, we're, there were only five girls left when we, by the time we got to South Africa. And I remember them showing me eating the same bagel like three times as if I had three different bagels. And they just like to punch stuff up. They find the one angle where you're not looking so thin and like that one side view and, um, yeah, it's as if but you I, can't I think, eat a bagel. You can't eat a bagel more than one time. I'm sorry. Yeah, but about. I mean, you can, and you still can. But by the time they had brought up the fact that they thought that I was gaining a little bit of weight, which I think I was like a little bit, but not enough to be like, OK, like you just can't be in this competition anymore. Um, and that was really over like two months of eating nothing but crew food. You would think that we have choices and everything that we're eating, but we're eating like crew on set like food, which is just the worst stuff. Um, and so it was like really hard to kind of like quickly lose the weight um, at the end, but they, they messed up. They, they definitely played around. I mean, they gave me the elephant for our safari photo shoot. They gave me gluttony out of the seven deadly sins. Um, and I think there was something else. They made sure to like show my, my, my belly area for, um, the, the infamous yes. shoot. I saw the, I saw that picture. It's like that's the first thing they pointed out. The first thing they pointed out was like, Oh, you're, you're Tommy. I'm like, she looks so healthy and normal. Nothing. Wrong. I was pretty. It was healthy. I was normal. And and plus, like TV really does add um, uh, fifteen pounds, at least fifteen pounds. I watched a YouTube video from a contestant of America's Next Top Model. I believe her name is Jana Turner, and she said that you like. I don't know if this is true on your cycle. Maybe it's in like cycles after yours but mm -hmm. she said that they could they weren't even allegedly i'm i don't i'm not claiming this is true or not but she said that they weren't even even able to talk to each other unless the cameras were rolling was that true for your cycle no the only rules that they had for us were it like if we were to go to the restroom to try to have a little if there was more than one person in the restroom they and we have our mics on then they can use that audio Okay. So there was no hiding from the microphone. So that was pretty much it. But we were able to talk to each other. Uh, I don't know. I'm really grateful that I was on such an early cycle because they didn't have all of these rules and, um, you know, stipulations and things like that going on. Um, it was a really free flowing, fun experience for me. It yeah. does. It does differ from season to season. I think the earlier seasons look, they're still pretty crazy. I watched, I reacted to some <laughs> episodes. I was like, I don't know how you guys did all this because uh, me as a photographer, it, my photo shoots and my friends photo shoots are so different you know we have the normal sh photo shoots I'm sure that you you've done so many of them now and I'm going to ask you this probably later on but you know being now in the real world of modeling versus America's Next Top Model what is like the biggest difference to you 
Oh my gosh, such a good question. First of all, I was not even able to use my portfolio uh, in my real life portfolio in trying to get what? signed to an agency because all the photo shoots are so over the top. So over the top, so much makeup, so much crazy theme. Okay, you're gonna be legs open, spread over a, a alligator, dressed as an elephant, holding a lotion bottle. Like it's just like so much that they, they're just like so overly done that they're they were not realistic at all. Um, but I think a lot of other things that I learned from the show were pretty uh, efficient, like in terms of like how the modeling industry is. It is tough, um, but of course they just exaggerate every single thing on the show. Everything is exaggerated. A lot of agents, and I'm sure you can give us some insight on this too. They want mm -hmm. models to have a clean, natural book when they first, like, like I'm sure after the show, you know, you are presenting this portfolio and they're, and what, what were they saying? Like, this is too much makeup. This is a little bit too much. Yeah, like this is too much. Well, firstly, they didn't want any reality stars like now it's completely different because of social media. There was no such thing as Instagram when we did the show. So um, when you're going into a casting or uh, an open call to like try to get representation, they either want a fresh face where you're like 16, no work done. You just have digitals and like, you know, you're just fresh with a couple of test shoots under your book, or you need to be extremely experienced and have tear sheets and have gone to Europe and have done everything um, in order to get signed to an agency. And so we were neither. We were household names. Our only experience for real was on the show. So a lot of the agencies that we went into, they, especially a lot of the, the younger agents, they were just like, we love you. I love you so much. I love you so much. But like, we just, we can't, we don't know what to do with you. So it's it was just like, it was really weird, um, but I finally like learned the industry and stuff. Like after a year, I moved right uh, to New York after doing this the um, the show in LA, and I was able to figure it out, figure out my market, and get my portfolio built on my own. Um, but yeah, girl, that photo, those photo shoots, just as over the top as can be. It's <laughs> crazy. Nowhere near realistic. Literally crazy that she's telling me that she had to rebuild her portfolio after a modeling show. <laughs> that is just mind boggling to me. Like they should have set you guys up with something better. Like maybe like a regular normal photo shoot. Did you guys know the concepts beforehand or did you just have to go with whatever was Girl. like, hey, we're, today we're going to wake up and shoot with a crocodile. No, we were, we had no idea what we were doing from day to day, but that's kind of what made it super exciting. I was kind of waking up like, okay, I have no idea what we're doing today. I just hope I don't go home. I knew every, elimination was every four days. I'm like, just please don't let me go home. Um, but it was super exciting. You never knew if Tyra was going to pop up. You never knew anything. So it was, it was incredibly exciting, but you, you, we literally had no hints, no clues to anything at all but it was that's what kind of made it fun do you have a favorite photo shoot that you've done on the show well my favorite one of my my favorite ones was the one with the dogs like we had um we had to do it for 1-800 flowers and we had to have a whole bunch of um flowers in our hands hot guy and then like we had like 11 dogs in the front and each one of them had their own owner in front and that was one of my favorites because it was in beverly hills it was like over this cliff and it was just like the most gorgeous day the most it was the beginning of the show i was shoot I, it, it was like it was just incredible i was still in shock that i was even on the show so it was like super exciting and then i love that one also because i got that on the first click of the camera. So that was, um, that made me feel like I was doing a really good job. Um, I kind of didn't care for gluttony so much the, the, the seven deadly sins shoot because, um, there just wasn't as, I, I don't know. I didn't like that. I got gluttony. It, you yeah. know, I just felt like, Oh, how am I supposed to make this sexy? So I tried my, my hardest. Um, and then there was also another one where we had to like throw tires and stuff from the back of a tire with fake rain coming down. I saw that Again. you looked amazing, by the way. Like, Thank girl, you. you were gorgeous. Every single photo, I'm like, Kenya, Kenya, number one, number one. Thank I swear you, to you, boo. beautiful. I saw the one with the rain coming down on you guys, right? 
Yeah, yeah, well, that was, it was just harder to do. We could barely hear the photographer. The rain machine was like so loud. And we had too much free range. Again, we're like super inexperienced. So it's like, well, do I sit on the back? What do I, what do, I do? I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do. So it was a little bit, um, you know, nerve, nerve wracking. How was the direction from the photographers? Do you feel like now that you've had so much experience in the real world and being on the show, the photographer interaction, how accurate was that? It was, it was actually really good. I feel like Nigel gave the best. Um, it was kind of interesting because we always, we had a creative director. So we had Mr. J as our creative director, which there's not always a, such an involved creative director on regular photo shoots. Um, it's kind of just between you and the photographer, you have the mood set up um, and your communication is with him. Um, and so because there were so many cameras and so much stuff going on, you don't know if the feedback that you're getting is just like shade or, you know, like you don't know how to like take everything. So um, it was just very interesting. It was, it was interesting. But like now that I've been doing it for so long, like photo shoots are supposed to be fun. You're supposed to be creative and create shapes and just do all kinds of like, you know, imaginative, it's, just, it's self-expression. So it's supposed to be fabulous, which I want to shoot with you, by the way. Oh, I'm, I would be honored. <laughs> Let's do it. Like, that would be amazing. <laughs> Come on down. We can do a little beach swimsuit moment something. I would love <laughs> to. I'll bring my stylist and we. I seriously like would love to. It'd be so fun. Yay. Like a cute video. Yeah, that would be amazing. People, it's kind of weird to have like these two worlds kind of crossing over now because I just do the reaction videos. And do you think that there's mm -hmm. one particular moment that you feel was misrepresented and do you want to like address that? Um, I So ag again, with just like the eating and stuff like that, they kind of ex were expecting me to like drastically become like super bony, like in a very short period of time. I think we had like, a week or an, a week and a half left in the show at that point. And they wanted me to all of a sudden, like, just like, they weren't saying not eat, but it was kind of like implied a little bit. It's like, how else am I supposed to, you know, slim down? Um, and then I think also with the, the, the African shoot with Bertini, which I would love to get into, um, I was just misled the entire time leading up to the show. It's like Tyra being, this and I'm, I love Tyra like please don't get me wrong like I she you know has completely changed my life but I kind of was thinking well what would Tyra do if she were uncomfortable on a photo shoot um after being hit on so heavily before the shoot like what would she do and I would and I thought okay a boss would be like no this is an inappropriate I feel uncomfortable you're taking advantage of you know, of be, having to like be next to me and dance with me. And so I, I would have made the same choice every single time. And, and let's get into that. I mean, I think it's, let's get into it. I, I really do want to talk to you about this. Um, <laughs> it's and for those who don't know, again, it's cycle four, episode 11, the girl who is special. And I want to actually read you the description of this episode, because I think it's really interesting. They, de they described it as the models are given a unique dance challenge and one participant feels that a mo male model's intense flirtation crosses the line. The line was definitely crossed. What they didn't really show was how heavily this man was um, flirting with me before the shoot. Like, can I get your phone number? I'm gonna come, he's literally said, I'm gonna come to America and find you and go and want to take, I want to take you on a date. Like, give me your phone number. I'll give you my phone number. And I'm shutting everything down because I'm like super focused at this point. Like I'm trying to win this damn show. Like what's going on? And you know, what's crazy is that I actually ran into him in New York and he's like, you've made me famous now. Thank you so much. And it was like so weird to see him like on the streets. Um, I've heard some horrible things about whatever his experience was in New York with things that I'm not going to get into, but just a very interesting character. Let, for those who don't know, let's start from the beginning of the, the or the, at least the photo shoot portion. You know, okay. you guys are in South Africa. They announce the theme. Like when these guys rolled in, like, what was your initial thought? Jay's like, Hey, we have these three male models that are going to be posing with you. I mean, at this point, I'm just, 
trying to think about all of the um, advice that they were giving, giving me the entire time. Like, okay, I've made it all the way to Africa. I can possibly win this thing if I can just open up and do whatever it is that I need to do to really nail this shot. Um, I thought that what, the other model was cute, actually. The other one that's like standing on everyone on the right side, I actually the thought drum. he was cute. Yeah, but I, I'm like, I'm, I'm a very professional person. And like, that just was not the time and place for like any of that. Um, I didn't mind if there were going to be men in the shoot at all, because I thought that I, we would have like our space and then I'd get to just, you know, do my thing. Yeah, I was just excited. I was excited to do it. Like, that's all. I wasn't, I had no idea that that was going to happen. So yeah, for people who don't know, um, so after him like hitting on me like so much and me turning him down, turning him down, we finally get on set. And um, I rewatched, I watched your video that you did of it, your recap or um, review or reaction. And um, I don't think that, I don't know if I actually expressed it, but he actually got underneath that cloth that he had on and it was really thin. And so I felt him on me and he was, you could hear him groaning and all of this stuff. And then it's so funny because someone left in, in your comments on one of the videos, it's like, okay, it's so funny how they tried, they kind, kind of tried to disregard the whole thing that happened. But the photo that they chose, his hands are like pretty much grabbing my butt. So you can insert picture wherever um but yeah. like it's you know him um grabbing me and it's just uncalled for like I could see if I were really comfortable with that and all of that stuff but like with him flirting and doing all of that stuff beforehand it just felt like okay now you're low-key um you know harassing me in front of all of these people just trying to get your feel on since you can't take me out yeah and as you mentioned there were a lot of people on set and I, I do want to mention too, you said, give me some space before it even started. Like right away, you set your boundary. And then I don't know, you can tell me if this is like accurate, because I'm sure they like edited things maybe out of order. But was it after you said, give me some space? And then the photographer is like getting closer. The only reason why I would think that they would say that is not necessarily to trigger me or anything, but just to make sure that all the guys are really in the shot just to make sure that the shot looks good. Cause it is like four people in a shot and they're trying to get the caress thing at the bottom and like all of this stuff. Um, but they, I don't think that it was necessarily, I don't know if they even heard me say to the guys like, okay, let me get some space. I just really wanted them to know, give me some space. <laughs> so you I said it two times. Space. You said it yeah. two times, two separate times. And then I actually had to write this down because I didn't want to be, putting words in anybody's mouth. But after he was touching you and you said, hey, um, I know it's not about feeling comfortable, but this is happening. Jay was like, you know, you said you, that he was moaning. The model was moaning. And, and Jay said, moaning where? And I, I know, like, no. what did you, what, how was, how did that go? It's like, well, I person, I was so shocked that they were not like, oh, wow, really? Like, and pulled Bertini to the side or pulled me to the side to comfort me or, or like, any of that. I think they just took it as like me having a diva moment or something. I don't remember like really what, like you covered a little bit of that panel, but I don't really per se remember at panel them comforting me either about it. Cause it's just like, it's kind of a traumatizing thing. I know Kaylin was also a little bit traumatized. She's already just like not very comfortable with just like strange men like in her space. Um, I don't think any women should be. I, I, was, I was trying to be like, just stay really focused in the shoot, you know, but it's definitely, I was, I was so shocked that that was the reaction. Like moaning where? It's like, what do you mean moaning where? Here on me. <laughs> do you need a map? Do you need a map or a GPS? Like you can't see what's right in front of you? Right, right. Just, you just know. rewind the footage? If I were the photographer, as I said in my video, that whole, he would have been kicked out so fast, like, Sweetie, you're gone forever. Like you're, you're not gonna here. model again. You're out of here. Yeah. Security. Yeah. Security. Security, security. And I just want to say to like any girls or women or men as well, especially men too, because like people, it's anyone can be taken advantage of. Speak up for yourself if you're doing a shoot and you're uncomfortable, or even if it's someone trying to get you to go nude for a shoot. 
or um, if you're just uncomfortable at all, there's no dollar amount that's worth that, that discomfort. Um, and then you might feel really guilty about it later. And then images stick around forever. So just make sure that you're comfortable speak up for yourself. Like there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Like I don't regret doing that at all. You know, a strong woman will, will, will speak up and stop whatever is going on. So I, um, I implore everyone to make sure you're speaking up for yourself when you're doing photo shoots. I'm extremely proud of you for speaking up because in a reality show situation, it like that, it can be very intimidating to say anything. Most girls would just go along with it, even though they are feeling uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, I'm just so happy that you stuck up for yourself. It seemed like no one else really said anything. Jay said this, and I need to keep quoting this because I think that w- hopefully we can make changes in the modeling industry. You know, he, after you spoke up, I believe the second time, Um, He says, we're here in a professional situation. There are like 50 of us sitting here on set, kind of almost implying that if there was something like the 50 of us would have noticed, but it was clearly happening right in front of him because he said, because he says, I quote, so this is for the guys. Let's try and be interested without literally grabbing her butt. So he does acknowledge that it yeah. they were grabbing where they were a little bit too much. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I, I think like no one's perfect. Right. But at the same time, I think because, and I'm not, I'm not trying to give them excuses or anything at all, but I think when you're like filming a show and it's like a competition and you're getting down to like the last few girls, it could be viewed as, okay, you're trying, you're trying to, you're nervous and you're scared or you're, you're not ready for this. And you're trying to find an excuse to get out of doing the shoot. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that's why they, you know, they felt that. But yeah, obviously, like the next scene is you saying, okay, let's try to do it without literally grabbing her butt. So you did see it. You did see something. But even if he didn't see it, I think that it's still um, just, just our right to feel comfortable. So even if you don't see it, if I mention, hey, I'm uncomfortable and there's something going on here, stop the shoot, correct it, and then let's move forward pull the model aside and just see what's going on and try to mediate it. Did anyone even take you behind the scenes and be like, Hey, sorry, like, are you okay? Or not? And no, nobody took me anywhere to discuss any of that. I think I was crying afterwards. I think maybe the girls consoled me a little bit. Um, but there was no, not from any of like the higher up people, like no one there really to comfort me or anything. I guess you didn't really see how much he was hitting on me in the very beginning. Like I was already uncomfortable. Like, I mean, imagine you're, you're at work and anybody is like trying to beg, like tell you they're going to come to your country and, and find you to take you out. Like he wanted a picture. He wants to take a picture of you. I'm like, what? Yeah, taking it way too far, bro. Taking it way too far. But I, I tried to just move on. I tried to just move forward with it. Got to still remain professional. I was like, my head was so in the game for the show, like just to win, um, that I just wanted to like press forward and move on. You, know? you definitely were professional. Like I sincerely applaud your, like how you handled that. I wish somebody would have said something. I truly wish that. By the way, and how was your perception of the show before you were a contestant? And then how was your per- perception after the fact? My perception of the show, it was actually hard for me to watch the show afterwards only because I knew which girl was going to go home from just listening to the music and just seeing how they're like editing everybody. I'm like, okay, this girl's definitely going to go home. It kind of takes away all of the mystery of, of everything. You kind of, I was able to see like, okay, so they, they want the winner to be someone who's had the most growth. So the, whoever may be the most hated in the beginning does not necessarily mean they're going to go there. That means that actually increases their odds or chances of winning. Um, and just other things that I would just look out for, uh, if they always played, if they always show someone's face and the music kind of get, tr- uh, turns to like this gloomy, dark kind of music, she's most likely going to be going home. I think they try to like psychologically, you know, subconsciously prepare for, prepare you for somebody to go home. You can like easily tell with all of their editing process, and it's hilarious. It's hilarious. We I would watch it with my friends afterwards, and pretty much would get every single thing right. 
You're like, oh, she's going home today. And then she goes, oh, yeah. I, I, I try to guess towards the end. I'm like, oh, she got like more screen time. And she was like problematic, even though she didn't even do anything. And mm-hmm. do, you, do you find that they purposely, and by the way, we're going to get to the judging portion of the of that that episode in just a second but I do want to ask you this do you feel like they make people villains when they're literally just like living their life they're not really villains I absolutely think they make people into villains the like I I said before like I said before like they have all they have 24 hour footage of you for two whole months 24 hours a day and then you're also doing you know once a week you're doing um interviews with the producers so they can just take so much footage if they can take you saying mostly negative things and you mostly said maybe negative and positive things but if they show you you know saying negative stuff then you're gonna look like the villain of the show or if they show you saying just only the nice and sweet things that can make you look really good and people are so gullible into believing everything that they see um, a lot of it of is editing. Are, it's editing, you it's, guys. It's all editing. It's all editing, especially if it's not scripted. Like, that's all they have, really. They ask really specific questions. Mm-hmm. They make you answer very specific answers. Um, and then, like, when you're, in, when you're doing question and answer uh, with the producers, you're answering the question with the question in it. So you start off by saying, so who I think is going to be going home this week. So it really sounds like you it's fully your own thought and statement. And you want it to say that so badly, but you're really just answering the question and they're forced you to answer it in that way so that it gives context. But so speaking of editing, my favorite, my favorite part, actually, this is, I don't really know if it's my favorite part, but aside from the photo shoots, I watched the judging portion of the show. I need to hear about this because not not only the the episode with you know the one in South Africa but just in general how are the how is the judging like you okay let's say you're getting ready for judging you walk in what happens like tell the the average person like what happens on this yeah so one thing that you don't know is that the house like the the panel is actually in the house Panel is in the house. You would think that you get in a car and you go somewhere and it's like, who's done judging? But it's all like in some part, like attached, like near the kitchen, but it's like blocked off. It's not like we can go in there during the day or anything. I know it's so you, random. You We're grab like, like a sandwich, you go into the judging. Oh, let's just go to judging today. Yeah, let's just go to judging real quick. But no, it was just this separate room that we would go into like every time. But that was like super surprising the first time. So you go in, they line you up. It takes forever because like they're getting all the lights and the cameras. There's cameras for every single angle and reaction. And it, I don't know, it's so funny. I remember, this is one thing I've, I've always remembered about panel. So this was, Tyra had on one of the first, she was the first time I'd ever seen a lace front wig in real life. And I was just like, I know this is not her hair, but it looks like it's coming straight from her scalp. And I was just, I, for months was so confused. And now it's just like, lace fronts are everywhere but I I remember like thinking wow her hair just looks so amazing every time like so perfect what are some other things about panel it gets hot in there I don't know it's like the most bizarre experience because you're you're fearing going home like you think you're you, you may go home and it's crazy and then what's also weird is that like when you're finished with the show you actually don't go home. Like if you get eliminated, you don't go straight home. Like everyone stays like in the hotel so for the confidentiality so that no one's families or anyone knows really who went home first um, or whatever. And it's really interesting. But panel, I mean, you just walk in, they put up your photo. Uh, actually, there's like a little mini challenge there like that. Oh my kind God, of relates those to challenges. Whatever challenge. Those, I'm sorry, those were ridiculous. They got you guys doing some random, they, the teleprompter challenge. So you were there for the iconic yeah. episode where <laughs> Tiffany is, you know, yelled at by Tyra. Is there any we like all things? We rooting for you. Yeah. Did we, was it, was it accurate what we saw? Like, did we miss anything? Um, It was pretty accurate. It was pretty, pretty accurate. It was the, the pressure we had never seen Tyra yell like that. So I know that it wasn't like a stunt or anything. I really feel like she was actually that upset. Um, I don't know. Me and all the girls, we talk all the time. Like we, we still can't believe that that was our cycle. Like it's like such an iconic meme now. Um, it, but it, was, 
<laughs> poor poor <laughs> Tiffany, I, by the way. I hope that she's doing well. Like, honestly, I know. that broke my heart. I hope she's doing well, too. I've only seen her once uh, or a couple of times since the show, but this was all, like, years ago. But let's see. Yeah, that was that was a high stakes. Like, that was... I mean, I was like, I already took the show so serious before that happened, but then I then at that point I'm like, okay, like this is no joke. Um, but I mean, it's it's one of those things like you maybe Tiff. I feel like Tiffany maybe reacted to that out of you know just being like a strong like defensive person. Like, okay, like you don't have to tell me twice if you don't want me to be here. Like, I'll just go. You're not going to humiliate me. I really sympathize with her you're not going to humiliate me and then for intentionally setting me up with this twisted tongue twisted um teleprompter situation you know make me look like an idiot and then kick me off like okay so you know she i think she handled it well i don't think she deserved that whole uh thing um she probably hates the show now for that uh, because it's like such a big meme but panel in general is just our hearts would be beating out of our chest before we would walk in you know because it's like your fate you could be going home like you spent all this time invested in the show the picture that you guys saw like do they just show one picture or do they like do you guys even know what picture they're going to show and do you feel like they chose the best photo amazing question we never see the photos that they choose beforehand so we always get 70 frames which is like 70 clicks of the camera before we shoot and definitely not hell no are they showing the absolute best photo they've got to make it seem like someone needs to go home and as beautiful as all the women were that were on the show um were like there was just no way like they did uv dirty on one of the episodes like where she had to be a fish I like, saw that one. Oh my God. I know she had better they, pictures than that. But they taped her, like all of her feet together and like they ha- have her hanging from something and you want her to like do a dynamic pose. Like how yeah. many different things can she do? There was not too much that she could have done, um, I think in that pose, you know, or in that net, caught in that net. But I definitely think, you know, it's a political show. I mean, I feel like if you look at, if you look at all of the winners of America's Next Top Model, you see that it's a different race, it's a different size, it's a different type. It's like a brunette, and then um, and then it's like, okay, we're gonna have our black girl, and then it's like, okay, we're gonna have a petite girl, and then we're gonna have our uh, redhead, and then we're gonna have our Latina, and then we're gonna have our plus size, and so it's like y- they're re- literally we're trying to make all of America happy, I think, but they definitely it's a little it's politics, it's just like set up. It's not true, you know what I mean? Necessarily yeah, absolutely. About, uh, who's winning and who should be going home and for whatever reasons. Do you do you think that the they, they already planned who was going to win beforehand? I think so. I think they do plan that girl, or at least halfway through, they already figure who who they think is going to win and like how to portray her, what photo shoots to give her, you know, yes. like, cause you're, you're doing certain themes and things like that, um, that it's h- definitely going to be harder for some girls to do. But I mean, that's, that's one thing that I think is kind of relative to the actual modeling industry. You never know what outfits you're going to get. You show up to get, you get a fashion show. You're not necessarily going to be in like the easiest to walk in dress or shoes. Like you never know. Like, so you need to be moldable and bendable to like, work whatever you're given it's kind of real comparable to uh the real modeling industry we're, we're back to the photo shoot after you pose with the three male models what happens after that because i know that the panel they they brought it up but i feel like it was kind of swept under the rug did we miss anything from from that panel like did they say more or was that literally it that was kind of it. I don't really remember them really bringing much else. They, they more so talked about my weight there. So maybe that was them in hindsight realizing, okay, maybe we should just like kind of let this go. Cause I don't remember talking about that again at all to anyone. So they literally just brought up like a couple of sentences like, Oh, just tell them in a fun Tyra said like in a fun way, like you, you were just like really straight up and blunt. And I love that you were just like, give me some space. And I, and again, it's so extremely important to speak up when you're feeling uncomfortable. You should never do a photo shoot 
that you're not comfortable with, or you're, you're just, you feel unsafe. They photographers have a, have an obligation to provide a safe environment for all their models. And they, you know, and I said in my video, do you, what do you think about this? Like if I believe if the photographer would have stood up for you and said like, no, like they need to stop, like that would have ended it right there because the photographer has yeah. so much power, right? Yeah. Photographer has so much power, but I think it was just so much going, I, I, I love Nigel and absolutely love Nigel. Still kind of talk to him, uh, you know, to this day, but I feel like um, because it's a TV show, everyone's yeah. not really in their right element doing what they necessarily would always do like on a set. Like, I think that if it were real life that Nigel probably would have <laughs> spoken up and said something Yeah, but because absolutely. it was like this reality TV show competition, they maybe felt like, I was trying to find an excuse or something or be a diva. You know? I, I feel like at times they, they, again, they do over exaggerate stuff and man, I literally can't, can't get over the, the little tests and challenges they have you guys doing before the show. Like I, I skip over them. I'm like, okay, like this has nothing to do with modeling. They're crazy. I mean, one of them was what, like that we had to do a, a ho couture look like makeup look, um, which I would never be doing my own haute couture look. Like, do you know how avant, it's like this avant-garde crazy makeup thing. And I was like, we're trying to redo this Christian Dior thing I had seen and you have 20 seconds. I mean, they're just trying to make stuff exciting for the show, but it's so far from reality. It's so far from reality. Is there anything from the show that you've kind of taken and used in your modeling career now? You mean in terms of like modeling tips? Yeah, like what's the biggest thing that you learned while being on the show? And how did you apply that into your now, like your professional modeling career outside of the show? You know, one of the big things, that's a great question. One of the big things that I've um, definitely taken away from it is definitely always be a businesswoman. You know, make sure I'm uh, reading over my contracts, make sure I'm looking at, you know, if I don't feel like I'm getting paid or being offered the right of dollar amount for something just to have the balls. Like if I, if my agent's not doing it, but have the courage to, uh, to negotiate my own deals and like be a businesswoman about it. Um, uh, I've always, you know, I mean, I always have respect for any photographers or anyone that I'm working with, but it just gave me so much more respect to like, having my first real modeling kind of experiences be on that show that, you know, just moving forward, I just feel like it's because it's such a big passion of mine that, you know, to always be professional on set and, um, you know, have fun with it and, and understand that it's not necessarily what I always want in terms of like how you're being dressed and all that kind of stuff. Like you just need, you are the, you are the hanger in that aspect and that, you know, you need to show up and be the canvas be the canvas, be moldable, you know? Um, yeah, so I learned like some pretty important things. Uh, you know, after the show ended and you were you starting your a, a career outside of the show, what has been like the biggest impact? Uh, I mean, the only thing that was hard for me to do, like I said before, was really just getting, actually getting signed. Like so many people were like, oh, you're more commercial, you're more commercial. And I'm five foot 11. And so I thought that I was just gonna like come into New York and just do, all the fashion weeks and everything, not realizing that you really had to be like a size zero um, to do like a lot of high fashion stuff or, or runway editorials, um, those kind of jobs. So the only thing that was difficult was like finding the right agency. But once I like understood like really my market, I mean, it's been amazing. It's, it's the whole show has had a, such an, a great impact on me. My following is, is incredible. There are so many amazing people who related to my goofy, hungry butt <laughs> on this show. And I just love it. Um, I love that. I, I don't know. I just, I absolutely love like meeting people who have watched the show. It's like, um, I don't know. It's so weird because I, people are like, have judged me from like when you were 19, when I'm 19 years, when I was 19 years old and I'm 35 now, I'm like, I'm a different person. I'm a woman. I'm a lady. So it's kind of, uh, interesting to like see people and, and, um, uh, and I don't know. It's just like, it's incredible. It's super fun. I've been, I'm so grateful. I've been able to travel. So I've done Paris, Milan, London, Fashion Week, Hawaii, uh, New York, LA Fashion Week, Miami Swim Week, which is super fun. I am so grateful that I'm still a, still modeling. Still didn't think I was. You're amazing. Are you surprised? Come on. I am kind of. 
<laughs> you literally did not stupid. age. You didn't age. You look stunning. I'm serious. Come on. I'm not Thanks, surprised. Muffin. Thank you. <laughs> and that's so much fun. So you did a lot of, so you do a lot of, do you do more like runway? Do you do more editorial stuff now? Um, I, I do like a little bit of everything. Um, I definitely am still doing runway. Mostly like Miami swim week is like super fun. Like you don't have to be this big to um, do stuff. Um, I do Paris Fashion Week. That's awesome. Like you're able to work with Parisian designers, which are like so different than American <laughs> designers. I love my American designers. You're not gonna be wrong, but they pay attention to like, they don't, they don't ship their stuff out for someone else to make. They make everything themselves. You know, it's all about like quality. Um, and so like that, it's super fun, like working in Paris in general, they just take fashion to the next level. Um, what do you think of French food, by the way? <laughs> um, they don't have, they barely have French fries. Okay. <laughs> and they don't make French toast. French toast is not a French thing. They don't even really make it over there. It's you so guys, strange. You guys, you gotta get on that. Yeah, I love fries. And I saw that you were eating fries. <laughs> I noticed this stuff. I saw you were eating fries in South Africa. Do you feel like the food was healthy because they're telling you like, oh, you need to lose weight, like you're whatever, this, this, this. But are they providing you the right like meal they really, options? They really weren't providing me with the best meal options. I mean, I'm just not the girl who I eat until like, I'm really satisfied. So I remember like right after they kind of like brought up the weight situation, they, uh, I, I was eating, I was like, okay, I'm just going to have just yogurt then. And I had one bowl of yogurt and I was not full. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go have like one more bowl of yogurt since that's all I'm eating for breakfast. I don't know. What can I say? I like to eat. Okay. I like to I eat too. Like to eat. eat as much as you want. When you were eating, I was like, yeah, girl, eat the fries. I love fries. <laughs> I hope you don't watch that part of the show and think like, oh, maybe I could have lost a couple of pounds. Like you looked absolutely healthy, normal. And I feel so sad that girls watch Thank that you. and think that that's an unhealthy, like, oh, they wanted her to be even skinnier. Yeah. Yeah. That was like a concern of mine. I kind of felt like I really don't want girls because when they see me in person, they're like, man, you're not fat like they really made it see, made you seem like you were fat and like that breaks my heart when I hear people say that because I aut automatically think okay well what are they thinking about themselves I think that if they were to really do the show now that they would be a little bit more careful about just the the requirements of the industry in general which I think they should absolutely change I think they are changing a little bit G social media is really good for a lot of things because now you're able to see if you have a body, you can model. Like it's all about your personality and your pizzazz and your person, like just everything that you're bringing out um, to sell whatever it is, whether it's clothes or, you know, products that you use. Um, but it's, it's why, why would the standard of beauty be so different than what most girls actually look like? You know what it's, I mean? To be absolutely. I, I and I always felt like America's Next Top Model had so much potential to change the industry for the better and create more realistic standards for the girls who were on the show and and the girls outside of the show. And when we look at things like you brought up Instagram, I think that's great because it shows like maybe a more unconventional model that doesn't fit into these standards. Like how has yeah. Instagram, cause you did the show when Instagram wasn't even a thing. So right. now you have Instagram and you're able to connect with your fans. What has been the response from them? Is there like a question or a comment that you get a lot from people? I don't know. You know what I get? Uh, people are saying that I'm still slaying it, which I am super yes. grateful and happy about people thinking, cause I, I mean, I'm still doing photo shoots. You think they could come up with cameras that have unlimited recording time, right? Yeah. You, th you sure. think, you think 2021. You would think, you would think. okay. <laughs> I'm going to record this. Record one more time. Okay. This doesn't look weird with all of this ceiling space above me. No, actually, in, pho in photography, that's a good thing because it leads the eye. They're like called leading the lines. Eyes brought here. Look at we're doing like a little okay. photo shoot workshop. Little session. <laughs> little workshop session. So bring that light, girl. Bring the arms up. <laughs> we should do like a Zoom photo shoot. Oh, that would be hot. That could, you know what we I want to do? We should get creative. We should I would get creative love to. We should do a reaction video together. It'd be so funny for you to be like, uh, okay, excuse me. That did not happen. <laughs> we should. We should. Very good idea. Very I'd good idea. That. Maybe with it, because I haven't watched the show in so long. Um, Don't watch it without I'd love me. to tell you about stuff that actually happened. Because I remember watching it and like, I'm like, oh this my is God. not necessarily how it really went. 
it's so interesting to hear from a ma- from a model's perspective. And speaking of a model's perspective, talk to us about your workshop. I know you you you're a posing coach, is that right? And you hold workshops for models. I think that's incredible. Yes, thank you. So, um, so. I, my business is called Find Your Light, um, which is because I help you find your light within and on set. So it's it's really um, something that is incredibly fulfilling for me. So I help girls, aspiring models or um, bloggers, YouTubers, um, fashion enthusiasts, or people who just enjoy taking pictures and like making their so- social media pop. Um, but I teach you everything that I've learned from America's Next Top Model and beyond. So I've been in the industry for 16 years and I've really come brought, made it this whole posing, smizing. I've, you know, really, uh, there's a science to it. There is a total science to it. Uh, and there's like a feeling that you have to have and everything. So I help everyone with their um, posing techniques from head to toe, helping you master your facial expressions. Um, teaching you all the logistics about the agencies, you know, like how to do, how many pictures you need for your portfolio, your comp cards, your digitals, which it's a huge mi- like mystery for a lot of people. They don't really know how to properly submit, how to submit to an agency. They don't even know their market a lot of times. Girls are just doing photo shoots just to do photo shoots. And um, it's not really, uh, you know, a, a, a really good representation of the kind of work that they can be getting, um, especially for beauty and for commercials, like that's where the big, the money is and people often want to do runway. But once you learn your market and learn how to, you know, slay in front of the camera, it just makes a huge difference. A lot of my models are getting signed now. I'm like reading over their contracts and um, I'm more of a model mentor to them, which is amazing. So I, like I, like I, so I have like two different packages, the one where I'm teaching them posing techniques and everything. Um, and it's also like a huge confidence booster because I want my models to understand their worth and their value in the industry. Like you are the prize. And then the other package that I have is like to actually produce a uh, photo shoot for them. So I assess your portfolio or lack thereof and then see what pictures you need in your portfolio. Um, and then I shoot your digitals. I, you know, I produce the whole shoot, hire makeup artists, hairstylists, wardrobe stylists. And then I'm of course on set post coaching you. We have your music going, I'm hyping you up and making sure like guaranteeing that you're getting really good photos. Cause girls are out here, you know, you're a photographer. Girls are out here spending so much money with photographers and it's not necessarily what they need. So, yeah. So you're not rolling out the crocodiles. They're not, they're not flying in the air, (laughs) jumping out of an airplane. You're not making, no, this is real life stuff. Come on. Come on. No, this is real life stuff. (laughs) They're not, you're not burying them in the ground. No, no. Right. (laughs) You're not going six feet under. No, none of it. None of it. So if you do have any, um, you know, people that are watching here, if you are interested, you just go to my Instagram, which is at Kenya.hill, and then you DM me. And then we do a consultation. Like I, I'm actually calling these girls up, doing a consultation. If, you know, just to see if Find Your Light is a good fit for them. And uh, then we move on from there. It's fun I absolutely time. love that. Really- You're like the perfect person for that because I, I, like just, by the way, what's your Zodiac sign? I'm a Virgo. Okay. Wait. So yeah, you're in September. I'm, I'm a Libra. I'm like, I'm like one day away from being a Virgo. So like, I just oh, feel that like Virgo energy and I love I it. I feel that energy too. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rising Libra. So we're chill. That's, we're the best. We're the best. We, honestly, we are. <laughs> we're super chill. I just get that mm. energy from you. And I feel like you're the perfect person to direct these girls in the right, in the right path because I mean, and, and you can kind of speak out on this too. After the show ends, did you feel like now you have to relearn certain things? Like, you know, you like comp cards and then, you know, agencies, digitals. Mm-hmm. Did they teach you that stuff on the show? They didn't teach us any of that stuff on the show. The show was all about just the show. Um, I got prints uh, from a lot of people, um, uh, like I had to, I kept in touch with one of the photographers and he sent me my portfolio. I don't even know if everyone got physical prints of their book. I actually have mine. If you want me to grab it and show you I'd some love of the pictures. To see it. Yes. Um, okay. Give me one second. Of course. Take your time. I think it's actually in Atlanta with my mom. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. <laughs> Send it to me next time when I come see you in Florida. Yeah, for sure. 
when I come see you in Florida, we can, you can show us that portfolio. I yes. would, I would love, I would love to do a video where I like go over your portfolio. Yes. And you can point out, yes, because you have, you have the eye. So obviously Thank I'd you. love to know you're in your We'd be your such office. a good team. We should do America's not a, a new show, not America's Yeah, not we should not make not. a new show. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I think when you make girls comfortable, when you know how to make a model comfortable, because everyone's not the most confident, even though they want to like model and be in front of the camera, they're not really aware of like their good side and angles and lighting. And when you really like have, when it's your passion, first of all, um, and then you have like the kindness and, and you like want to boost someone's confidence and really make them feel good for the photos. The photo shoot is so much more fun and it's so much more natural and free and you get bit better images at the end of it. But I think we should put our heads together and come up with some stuff. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, girl, I got um, a couple <laughs> of uh, ostriches we can do a photo shoot with and then we're going to be, we're going to have you like suspended from uh, a tower. Is that okay with you? And then we're gonna do a photo no. shoot in the garbage. Garbage no. photo shoot. <laughs> the garbage. That's so I, like Ari, Ari, they did that. They had an episode. I just reacted to it. They were like in a landfill. I'm like, these poor girls, like what oh. they make. Wait, wait, wait. So I know you've done runway stuff. So tell me, did you did you see there's like a video circul- circulating on Twitter? Uh, it's from America's Next Top Model. They had the giant like, like, uh, what is it called? Pen- pen- pendulum? Pendulum? Pendulum, the ones that are like moving the runway where like the girls have oh to like gosh, walk. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. Insane. We should the react drama. to that. We, we should. should react to we that. Should. We, we should. We can react to whatever you want. I think there's so there's so much ridiculousness that happens on the show. Um, I mean, I'd love to I'd love to revisit some stuff and see like what's going on. Aside from the ridiculousness, is there any favorite moment from the show that you like remember? Um, I, the first time I saw Tyra, like it was so surreal for me. It was just like, I I couldn't believe that she was there. Um, and then the next time when she said my name again, I like, after she said, uh, said my name and said that I was going to be in the house, uh, during semifinals, I just thought, I do not want to wake up. I don't want, I feel like I'm going to go to sleep and wake up and then I'm going to be just at home in my bed. And like, none of this actually ever happened. It's just going to be like all one big dream. I really truly felt that. Um, And so that was, that was just incredible. And then when they said that we were going to go to South Africa, I was super pumped, super hyped. Like I, I always wanted to go to Africa and I thought that I'd be like old by the time I'd be able to travel there. Um, So that was like, an amazing memory seeing the jays going to panel for the first time you're like damn like really at panel like the whole thing because i was a fan of the show you know as well so uh all of it was just like super fun i had an amazing time on the show it was super fun that's amazing and it's just incredible to hear like of all your experiences and i just want to touch on one more thing that you mentioned that they didn't really to give you that knowledge of again you know the the agency stuff like the comp cards all the stuff that is so basic for models I mean like now what what do you think of that now do you feel like they should have kind of did a crash course like was there no posing like lessons at all did they just throw you into the first photo shoot there there was there was no there was no teaching us of anything it was kind of just I think the competition was aimed to see who already has what it takes um, and who can learn from the little things that we're showing them during the challenges. Um, yeah, they didn't tell us anything about comp cards or digitals or anything. That's why it was so hard for me and probably a lot of girls to get work afterwards or just to get signed afterwards because we don't know anything and we're teenagers. We, we really, we literally don't know what kinds of things that you need for your book. Some things that we did learn, like, you know, when you go to a casting, you, you you really don't have much makeup on. You just have like a little mascara, a little gloss, like little tidbits here and there. But we, I had to really figure it out on my own in New York City with like knowing nobody um, and just trying to trying to figure it out. I had to figure it out. Again, so crazy. You spent all this time on a show for modeling. They don't even give you guys comp cards and they don't even give you guys the pictures. You had to get it sent by the photographer. That yeah, to me is just had, so crazy. Was- I mean, it was crazy. I was, I was super happy to like finally get them sent to us in the mail. And what was crazy was that we weren't able to take pictures at all in Africa because um, they didn't want us to reveal 
like when we went back home, they didn't want it to like get leaked out whatever country we went to um, because that was like such a huge, like, you know, mystery of the show. Like what country are they going to go to? But didn't people see you on the so, plane? Like, <laughs> Say that again? I know, <laughs> I know, I know. I know. I don't was, know. Like, I'm just there being... Was, there, was, there were so many loops, like little loopholes. Um, you were just like, it, I'm not on the show. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just flying internationally. Happening. Yeah, this isn't happening. <laughs> Um, well, for the final finale fashion show, we actually all walked in the show, all five of us who were in Africa, so that they wouldn't know. Um, but Africa got everything. They get everything. I don't know how it is now, but they got everything that we were watching on America, uh, watching in America. They all got it on average of like seven years later. So like they were delayed on everything that we got anyway. So they really didn't even know what America's Next Top Model was at the time. And so the models that you were with on that shoot, did they know about the show? Like Bertini, did he, did you said that he they had, he heard. told you like he's famous now because of the show, but he never, did he have prior knowledge of it? No, like, but what, when they were filming it, they didn't know like how big the show was. Um, I don't think anybody in Africa really knew how big the show was. It was kind of just now kind of blowing up in America. So it, it was all like a beginner, a beginner, uh, like a, I don't know. It was, it was, they didn't know what was going on. By the time I saw him, like a couple years later, the show kind of, I guess, kind of took off and like some stuff came out and they figured it, you know. You mentioned that Bertini bumped into you, by the way, that is so crazy. How many years had passed? And then out of everybody on this earth, you bump into him in New York. Girl, it had been about... I'd say it was probably four or five years after this, after uh, filming the show. Um, so it was long enough for me to not really feel a way towards him about anything, like to feel like, how dare you do that? Cause I never got a chance to talk to him or anything, but it definitely, um, you know, I guess by that time they had that they had aired America's next top model over there. And so he, I guess that gave him, that gave him extra, minutes of fame and recognition i guess and so he was super proud of it i'm like that is not something it, to be proud of at all did he apologize to you ever no never got an apology never got an mm. apology it's all right it's very disappointing i think that you yeah. deserve an apology not only from him but from the entire product in my opinion i think that they should all give you an apology i'm dead serious oh well thank you i think yeah. i mean I'm fine now. Obviously, it's been 16 years. So, but I, I think at the time it would have been it would have been nice to get that. Just know if I were there. Oh, sweet darling. I'm just Mwah. giving you a hug right now. I'm giving you a hug. Mwah. I'm like feisty when it comes to that stuff. Like no one, yeah. no one disrespects my models. Like those are my friends. How are you now? What are you up to these days? I know you have your professional modeling career. I know you did a little bit of acting. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. One of my favorite, favorite um, uh, acting jobs that I got. I mean, I did um, half and half, which was incredible being able to act with uh, Steve Urkel, which was crazy to be able to do something with him um and then uh doing new girl was amazing because like zoe de chanel come on like they're they were all so awesome the director was a director from i forget his name but he's the same director as curb your enthusiasm so that was like super amazing <gasps> to be able to work with him and he was like super uh nice to me and like told me i did a really good job and add, brought a nice little flair to the show um, so like, guys, check that out. I think it's season two, episode two of, um, of new girl. So that was incredible, but I am, I'm focused on my business. I've just relocated to Miami. So I'm going to be going uh, on a little agency hunt down here. Um, and like getting things rolling, but, uh, my main focus right now is find your light and helping models just learn how to pose and do everything so they can get their career started. Um, we do most of my sessions. I do just via FaceTime or, um, in person, if they ever travel down to Miami or if they're in the Florida area and, um, it's just super fun. That's my baby. I've been doing it since 2017 and, um, 
I just love doing it. I love teaching. Can we see a, a model management in the future? I think you'd be great for that. Like scouting models and then signing oh. them, being their manager. You'd be so good. I thank you. Um, I think that I would be good. At, I mean, people have been asking me for a long time because like just walking around New York City, I would just see people or even young girls and see them and be like, that girl's definitely got potential. Look at those features or, you know, like I, 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 I have unconventional features or unconventional or unique features. I've got this super square face, really tiny nose. I've got this big round ass forehead. So like, I've, I, I, I don't know, like my eye kind of always kind of goes to non-typical features uh, when I see other people. And um, I don't know, you may say something in the future. I, I mean, an agency or management or something. I'm sorry. I said it would be perfect for you. Thank you. Yeah, I think it would be amazing. But I really love making people like understand like how beautiful they are and helping them feel comfortable. If I know that modeling is their passion, I love like giving them all the things that they need to know so they can get in front of the camera and slay. There are so many things that people don't know. Like it's just like we're getting started with singing or acting or any of that stuff. You, There's no direct path. Like people don't really know the exact path to take. You don't know, there's no one telling you, okay, this is how many pictures you need in your portfolio. This is how often you need to be updating them. This is the kind of picture you put on your, on the front of your comp card. Uh, they don't know that, you know, for your digitals, like you're not really supposed to be all posed out. Like it's really, the, you know, the wardrobe, everything. These are things that like took me a long time or people don't even know that you can go to an open call like every week pre-COVID, uh, that you can go into a casting or an open call for agencies for representation. Normally they have like one day a week uh, where they have open calls. But there's just so much that, that, uh, that people don't know what to do, how to get started. And I'm like one of the only people who really teaches and helps, uh, helps with this for, for aspiring models. There are other girls who have tried to do what I do and have uh, you know followed suit. Uh, with the coaching, but I was one of the first ones to do it. And so I'm, I'm excited. There will be growth. I'm excited to see where it grows. Yeah. We're going to have all the information in the description. So you guys can check out Kenya's workshop and get in touch with her. I, I truly think what you offer is so valuable, especially for aspiring models, super important. So check out the links down below. And I just want to uh, thank you so much. Is there any last thing you want to mention? Any like jokes or I don't know what something that you want to say that I missed? We were all rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Uh, no, there's nothing I want to say. Thank you so much for having me. You are incredible. You're really good at interviewing. Um, hopefully we can okay. do something confession I was like super nervous I swear I have like three pages of notes and tell me if I looked at my notes this whole time I'm like I no her. like I you know ask her good questions and all no, this stuff. you are so professional you seem like you do this interviewing process all the time you're lovely you're fun you're cracking jokes you seem super enthusiastic you know I, I like, am thank you especially with you blast. like I'm just thank feeding you. off of your energy Thank you, doll face. I'm going to be seeing you soon. Very, very soon. 1000%. It's just yes, the COVID tell stuff. Follow, tell your, tell your, uh, your following, your fabulous following. I love that everyone's like so supportive in the comments of the video that we made. But if there's any maybe uh, reaction videos that they want to see from either my season or other seasons, and maybe we'll, I'll drop a little bit of tea, you know? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yes. All right, guys. So we would love to thank Kenya for joining me today. I'm going to have all her links down below. Check them out. Again, she has a workshop. She's a posing coach. If you're an aspiring model, if you're interested, thank you so much, Kenya. And we'll be seeing you in the future. Maybe photo yeah. shoot or two reaction video. Let us know what you guys want to yeah. see. And we'll see you guys in our next in, in our next video. Girl, we're together. We're, this yes. is it. Libra. Yes. Team it's Libra Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> it's going down it's happening it's happening <laughs> all right guys we'll see you later